A key component of success in boxing is the ability to generate power. In other words, generate force, but quickly. If you've ever given or received punches, you'll know that power looks and feels very different to just simple strength. Today I want to find out how improving my mobility, activation and stabilization can affect my punch power. So I've enlisted some expert help from my friend Joe at Artillery Strength Training. So we are still in lockdown here in Hong Kong. It's our third wave of COVID-19 and I've come to my mate Joe's place to do some strength training today. What are we gonna look at today? Um, well, I think we're gonna put you through a little assessment, see how you move. I'm really focusing on your mobility and stability from your ankles, your knees, your hips and shoulders sure. today, right? You said you wanna improve your boxing technique and punching power a little bit. Sure. Um, I figured we'd go from the ground up from your ankles to your shoulders. So I'll take you through a little bit of a mobility and kind of a priming session, see how you move. Um, and then we'll jump on the kettlebells and hopefully start to introduce a little bit of power and force production, which will hopefully carry over to the pads, the bag and the ring. So really I wanna see how flexible your ankles are okay. and how mobile your hips are. So we're gonna do a squat test and the goal is to drop into an almost perfect squat or ideally a perfect squat. With your squat. back flush against that. With your back straight, often the common misconception is that you need to be upright when you squat. Sure. Now if we put you under load, you're gonna tip forward. Sure. And that's okay if you can track that straight line. If I start arching forwards, that's not okay. okay. Right, straight. So it's like you're hinging, but you're not bending. Absolutely. Right? Once my mobility goes here, if I get into a squat, once I can't produce that squat anymore, if I lean forward, again, keeping a straight back, the starts to go then right. where do I get mobility from? Ankles, then I start so. to get it into my ankles. Right? The goal is to keep those three points of contact, the back of my head, my fingers are touching my neck, and then it's small on my back. And I want to try and squat down to 90 degrees and come straight back up again. As soon as you fail, that's your opportunity to improve, isn't it? Specifically for women, you, you might find that your feet do turn out a little they bit. Because they've got a wider cue angle, right? The quad sure. angle is wider because they give birth okay. and we don't, right? So Not to my knowledge. If, if, your, if, your, if your feet track out a little bit, that's okay. So nice and slow, hold it at the bottom for two seconds. See that you're about four fingers off of 90 degrees, come up. Okay. Now you might be able to get a little bit deeper with that chin tucked. And now you're pretty much bang on 90 degrees. So another test now. Second test of the day, yeah. Let's see how Second and final test of the day. Um, I've got a feeling I've seen this one before. Is this with the shoulders? Yeah, it is. It's the wall sit. Oftentimes, if we're going to be squatting, it'll be under a bar or maybe an overhead squat with a kettlebell or whatever. That, that shoulder impingement can limit your ability to stay upright. And so those exercises are like forcing me to hunch the shoulders forward, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Right. And once we start to put you under load, that can be dangerous because if I roll my shoulders forward, my spine follows, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay. we want to try and keep shoulders back and keep your head kind of through that window. If you're doing any overhead movement, yeah. a shoulder press, for example, you want to be able to get your head through that window right. and that will yeah. transfer to any squatting or anything as well. Sure. So if you create an arch, that stick should drop a little bit, right? So if you let it arch, it drops out. So there, I can visually see that I've failed. Yeah. So really, this is just a cue. You want your back flat against the wall, trapping the stick. Joe is finding impingements around my hip, my shoulder and my ankle, all of which are becoming more common among people as we spend more time sitting, staring at our screens and less time moving around. Just remember that even if you're one of those people who trains like an absolute animal for one to two hours every day, if you spend the remaining 12 or 13 hours just sitting in the same position and staring at a screen, the chances are your range of motion is getting smaller and smaller over time, and that's just not sustainable. The kind of work it takes to remobilize and restabilize your body is very slow and unglamorous, but it's absolutely essential for boxing because it has huge ramifications for force production. So if I was throwing a big weight overhead, and I was getting my head through the window, but at the cost of at, Yeah, exactly. This, at the cost of your L spine, that lumbar spine there, that's not good enough. So we need Wait. to build stability there and get the yeah. mobility in our hips. And it's, it's my immediate like instinct is to just up, over yeah, exactly. that, so, right? Yeah, really. That's why the stick That drops. curvature of the spine is going to be dangerous over, under load. Not good. Okay. Let's see what we can do to improve that a little bit then. Step out a little bit, come up, brush my ear, head past the post, the post being my arm, and then rotate round and I can feel my shoulder articulating and kind of clicking a little bit there. It's not painful, but again, it's first thing in the morning. So you should be loosening that joint. Certainly over two or three weeks, two or three months, two or three years, I want to get closer and closer and more articulate with that movement. Again, keeping my arms straight, not shooting out and rotating. Rotating my, sh my shoulder joint back, not twisting round and over rotating on that rear swing either.
You'll notice Harry's hands are rotating naturally there. Now he's going to rotate the shoulders, turning his palms up. He's going to tap the base of his neck and then he's going to swim back in, keeping nice and tight, pointing those toes the whole time, controlling his breathing. His abs should be tight and stretched. Then back into the cool and drop out of it. That was grim. Everything is switched on. Yeah, you feel everything through your whole body. You're keeping your feet off the floor. Yeah. You keep everything ready. Everything feels activated yeah, after that. So we just finished our session and uh, what things were we focusing on? Not getting tired, I think was the main thing. Um, <laughs> but essentially we, we took you through a kind of priming warm up uh, session because from earlier we addressed that you had some impingement with your shoulders, right? So we were just uh, following that principle of generating some movement and space with some of those movements and then activating that shoulder joint um, and engaging it. Um, and then we did some stability work as well with the kettlebell to finish. Uh, and then we got into our workout and we were really just focusing on the upper body from, you know, kind of from the waist up to the shoulders and focusing on movements that generate force um, and produce power, such as in those transverse planes if we're punching and striking. So we focused on really the kind of the core musculature system, um, your shoulder girdle, chest and triceps as well, everything that we use to really generate power. I feel like I've learned a lot, mainly that the ability to mobilize and stabilize your body through a range of motion is going to have a a positive effect on the force you can produce when you put into practice. Yeah, exactly. And we, some of those movements that we focused on as well was about, I keep saying, kind of coaching you to put the brakes on. Sure. If you think of it in like a car analogy, we can we can build a really strong, powerful engine, but if we don't upgrade the braking system, it's not going to be effective sure. once that force is applied. So the ability so, to decelerate is as important to train as Exactly, yeah. Your central nervous system will only let you exert as much force as it can retract and sure. control. Okay. So with those anti-rotational movements, that uh, press up to rotation, for example, if you really crunch the core and, and put the brakes on at the top, um, and when we were doing the coop press and locking out at the top and fighting that over rotation, we can kind of up upgrade our braking system, so to speak, and then you will be able to release a lot more power sure. once your body knows that you can kind of retract and control that power. So yeah, we're focusing on that quite a bit today as well. Nice, right, well, I, I feel like I'm gonna take those exercises and those principles, apply them to my training moving forward. And uh, yeah, if you want to get some sport specific training or something that's gonna help you perform better in any activity that you're trying to do, give artillery strength training a go because everything's clearly explained to me and I, I feel like I've made real progress in just one session. So uh, yeah, cheers, man. Good, yeah, it's been good training you. I'll send you some programs, you can keep up with it. Absolutely. All right, I'll see you next time. Cheers, Harry.